Hey folks, what's going on? It's Pastor Hassan. It's Friday morning and here's our word for the day. And so we're going to look at Romans chapter 8 um, verses 1 to 11. This Sunday, Lord willing, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 20, thinking, continuing to think about uh, the resurrection and looking at what Paul has to say regarding that and, and the implications of the resurrection, what that means for believers both now and for all of eternity. And so just ahead of that, we're going to look at uh, this text of scripture in Romans 8 that also deals with the reality of the resurrection and, and what it means for believers. And so I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, uh, beginning at verse 1, and we're going to camp out and particularly focus on, on verse 11. So let's read that text together, and then I'll make a couple quick comments. Here's what God's word says in Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of Christ or spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. <clears throat> and so we thank God for his word. And so here in Romans 8, Paul starts with this glorious statement about the, the fact that as believers, anyone who trusts in Jesus Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. We stand not guilty in the sight of God, declared not guilty, declared perfectly righteous by God because of Jesus Christ and what he has done. And, and by virtue of our union with him, that, that's our standing before God. Perfectly righteous, not condemned, not guilty. But then he goes on to work out sort of, sort of the, the ethical implications. Okay, here's what that looks like practically. Okay, that, that's, that's glorious. But okay, how should it impact how we live? <clears throat> and then to or, in order to do that, Paul explains this contrast between life in the flesh and life in the spirit. And when he talks about life in the spirit, he is really referring to a life that is, is controlled by the Spirit. So if you imagine human beings as, as like machines, like if you think of a machine that has a set of controls that, that are stuck or, or jammed in, in a particular, at a particular setting, um, that, that describes human beings by nature. By nature, our setting, if you will, our controls are, are jammed in the position of um, set on the flesh. We're, we're bent towards uh, the sinful nature and doing things that do not please God. In fact, by nature, this text tells us that, that the, the mind that in verse 7, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. We cannot by nature on our own Please, God, live in a way that is acceptable to him. <clears throat> but what the gospel does is it radically transforms that. It, it gives us a new set of controls, if you will. So we're no longer controlled by the, the flesh, but now controlled by the spirit. And so our, our heart's desire, our ability, and, and our desire is, is bent and wired towards 
pleasing God. <clears throat> and so Paul sets up this contrast. Like that's what's true of you if you're in the spirit. Like you cannot please God. It's impossible. But then he says in verse 9, you, however, talking to believers, are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. If, if, if Christ is in us, Paul will say in the next verse, well, he says before he says that anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. So he speaks interchangeably about the spirit, the Holy Spirit as the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ. And then he says, if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. So he speaks again of this, this glorious, mysterious reality. So in the first verse, he says, um, he speaks of those who are in Christ. And then here he says, if Christ is in you. And that just speaks to the, 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 the mysterious union that, that is, is true of believers. We are so connected to Jesus by faith that ultimately his fate becomes ours. What's true of Jesus is true of us. And so he says, if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, in other words, although like we still die, like we're still subject to death because of like that's that's part of the consequences of sin. He says, even though that's true, the spirit is life because of righteousness. And, and, and what that means is the Holy Spirit himself, God himself actually takes up residence in us and gives us life. We have the life of God in our hearts by virtue of our faith in Jesus Christ. And, and, and we have this resurrection reality that, that we can walk in right now. We can walk in, in newness of life because of what Christ has accomplished. And so Paul is going to use this resurrection language in the very next verse, in verse 11. It says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, through his spirit who dwells in you. And so the, think about that. Like the same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, like has, has given us the Holy Spirit and that spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us life now. Which, which means we have the desire and the ability to do what pleases God. We have the desire and the ability to fight tooth and nail uh, against sin. Paul is going to say a few verses later, um, if you live according to the flesh, this is verse 13, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. We can do that now as, as believers. And we want to do that because we have resurrection life in us right now. The, the, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is, is alive and well in us, giving life to our mortal bodies. Like So that means we have spiritual life now, but it also speaks to the life to come. That's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to our mortal bodies. Like we will be bodily resurrected in the same way that Jesus was. So we have this great and glorious hope to look forward to on that day. But even now, like be amazed. I just want to encourage you to meditate today on the fact that the same God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit has, has placed that same spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is, is resident in you. You have resurrection life present in your heart which means you have the ability and the desire to please God and you can put to death the deeds of the body by the spirit and it means that we can we can rejoice in the life that that will one day be fully realized when Jesus comes again so brothers and sisters rejoice in the reality of resurrection life walk in that um, by the grace of God today and in keeping with that and talking about resurrection life, I told y'all we had a bit of a, uh, an update, a uh, surprise update, if you will, coming up today. And so here it is. 
Uh, we're not just going to talk about the reality of the resurrection and, and what that means for believers. We're, we're going to see a picture of resurrection life. We're going to see uh, pictured on Sunday um, someone who is united to Christ in his death and in his life. And so this, this Sunday, uh, we have the, the joy and the privilege of being able to celebrate uh, a baptism. And this is going to be our, our first in terms of a virtual baptism. And although we would much rather be able to celebrate that together in person, we, we're still going to celebrate and, and rejoice in the Lord nonetheless. And so I'm going to hold you in suspense a little bit longer and not even tell you who it is. You're just going to have to tune in on Sunday to see it. But we have, we're going to have on Sunday our 1045 service. And then at one o'clock, we're going to post uh, a, a baptism. We're going to have the joy of celebrating along with one of the families of our church, uh, the, the baptism of, of an, an individual. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm having, having a little bit difficulty, not even just saying who it is, but, uh, it just, it's a bit of instruction regarding this baptism. So that's going to happen at one o'clock and I'll post, I'll post, uh, uh, the video for that and send the link around to it. But what I would ask is that um, you you would not share the link for uh, the baptism. Like we want to uh, celebrate this together as a, as a church family, but p please beyond uh, people who are connected to the church, don't don't share the the link to the video. But I'm really excited. Um, this is the. I was going to say the most excited. I've been really excited in talking to this individual about what the Lord is doing in their lives or in their life. And I'm excited for us as a church family uh, for the rest of y'all to hear that as well. And so be praying and um, yeah, just be waiting with anticipation. And uh, yeah, let's celebrate together as we not only uh, we don't just talk about the reality of the resurrection, but we get to see it. And, um, and for those of us who are trusting in Jesus, we get to walk, walk that out every day. So baptism coming up on Sunday uh, at one o'clock. Love y'all. Y'all have a good day and uh, get a hold of me if you need to. Um, and in the meantime, y'all take care. God bless. Bye.